Hi there, it's Marzena. I'm a person who enjoys coming up with my own concept for each project as much as coming up with the actual designs. But I also think that sometimes it's nice to just listen to the crowd and give people what they want. This is why from time to time I make a doll based on your most frequent suggestions. Last year the most requested concept was a bone fairy. And today I'm gonna make my family of black and yellow striped fairies a little bit bigger. You already know it from the thumbnail, so yeah, let's make a bumblebee fairy. Of course I chose an OMG body and for our usual head switcheroo, I picked this pretty dark-skinned broken Claudine head and also her upper arms and some Frankie's leftovers that I also found in my stock box. I'm always preparing the doll in the same order. Cutting off the hair. Heating up the heads and removing them from the neck packs. And my favorite part scrubbing and removing the glue and the hair plugs from the inside of the head. I didn't have to prepare the OMG head for anything, I just really like doing it. Next step, wiping off the factory face with 100% acetone. This Claudine has some sort of staining, but I hoped that the head shrinking process will fix that. And yep, it did. I cut off the ears, which was a little bit harder on a shrunken head. And after deciding that this girl doesn't need no ears at all, I prepared her scalp for the reroute by painting it with some brown and yellow acrylics. While I was rerouting, I decided to give her a different hairstyle, so I stopped to fix the paint job. And before some fantasy creature police come out to point that bumblebees are not that brown, well, don't care, this one is. This is my design and this is a creature from a fictional world that I fully imagined. I will use as much accuracy and as much my licentia poetica as I please, so excuse me. Anyway, I rerouted the head around the ear holes and I just took some hot glue, poured it into the holes and stuck the pieces of hair inside. With those holes fully plucked, I squeezed a good amount of high-tech glue inside the head and smeared it evenly with the Q-tip to secure the new hair plugs. On the next day, the head was finally ready to get back on the body. It's a shrunken head, so I always need to widen the neck hole and trim down the neck pack first. Warming up the head with a hair dryer also helps. I turned my girl into a cozy burrito and sprayed her with three layers of Mr. Super Clear to prepare her for the face up. So, I decided that she won't have any ears, right? But as we say in Poland, only a cow never changes its mind. Because my bee and wasp fairy have ears, this one should have them too, in fact. First I was thinking about replacing her original wolf ears, but eventually I ended up giving her a pair from some broken abbey. I painted the new ears with a matching skin color acrylic paint and could finally start the face up. Blushing and shading is my least favorite part, but I always start with it, even though I'm also adding a lot of shading and blushing during the whole process. I just like to start marking the facial features placement on the face that is already more 3D and has some depth to it.
of course I drew the eyes a little bit smaller than the sculpted ones. As I said in my last doll project, I am at the point in my skill development where smaller and more proportional eyes just speaks to me more. Let's just say that I discovered during my search for doll related wisdom that you don't need to draw big eyes to make a really cute face. Who would have known? Lately, I like to use the face up process to talk about doll customizing related, but not necessarily that project related stuff. So in my previous videos, I talked about intellectual properties, artistic choices and such. Today, I want to say a few things about safety. You've probably noticed, at least I hope you have, that there are some warnings on the beginning of my videos or on many other doll customizers videos here on YouTube. Those disclaimers are valid and no matter how many people will leave a comment like you are wrong, I am a kid and I'm doing it, it won't change the reality that this is not a hobby for unsupervised kids. If I would get a penny for every time I cut or burn myself while crafting, I wouldn't need a job, you know. For the same reason, my videos are not suited for anyone who feels uncomfortable with blood, cuts, lacerations and stuff. I won't promise you that you won't see it here. Cuts, blisters, scratches are just a risk that comes with the profession. No matter how careful you are, you won't avoid it completely. With techniques that I'm using, you can even damage your lungs or lose your eye or finger if you are not careful enough. Trust me, I wouldn't want my kid to play with half of my crafting equipment without my supervision. Even though I'm trying to use my stuff safely, I did manage to burn my upper air ducts recently by spraying and epoxy sanding because the mask I was using wasn't good enough. I ended up with damaged mucous membrane, aka killer rhinitis, that is bugging me since February. I was never allergic to anything, so running nose was normally only a common cold thing for me. This is something else. And it sucks. So, just to summarize everything, all crafting can be risky, and please be careful. When I glossed her eyes and lips with Liquitex Gloss Varnish, I realized that I wanted to try the baby hair thing on this doll. I drew them with the pencils and sprayed only the forehead with Mr. Super Clear, so I won't have to gloss the eyes again. Okay, the face was ready. And I think it turned out really cute. Well, I forgot to show you the before and after head shrinking comparison, so here it is. I will never go back to not shrinking my heads. Never! Time for some body mutilation. I cut off the donor's arms and my main doll's legs, because IMG's legs are very poorly possible, so I needed some drastic changes here to achieve what I was going for. I also separated the tights from the lower legs and modified the length of the additional arms. For more accurate gesture, I decided to switch the hands and used monster high ones as the main pair. 
The wrist balls differ, so I needed to adjust them. They wouldn't hold by themselves, but I was gonna glue them in anyway. I smoothed the rough edges on all the pieces. I also strongly modified the cuffs. I also sanded down the plastic seams and drilled the holes for the additional arms. At that point I decided to remove the cuffs completely and leave only the feet and ankles. After making holes in each piece for the wire attachments, the phase 1 was finished. The second phase was just gluing the doll pieces together and covering the joints and gaps with epoxy sculpt. I also widened the range of the movement on her main arms and removed the painted on panties and stitches with non-acetone nail polish remover. I glued a piece of wire in her pelvis and attached the legs to it after. With more wire, I connected the feet to the knees. I also needed to curve a little in the additional arms, so they would fit the torso better. As you can see, I have no mercy for my dolls. I mixed two parts of epoxy and covered all the gaps and joints with it. I always mix my epoxy in gloves, but I just can't sculpt in them, so I'm glad that I'm not allergic to this material. I have the air ducts of the princess, and hence of a blacksmith, I guess. So first I made the legs and the additional arms. And when they cured, I sanded them down, glued the arms to the torso, the main arms in pose, and then I covered all the remaining joints and connections with another part of epoxy. Oh, and I also drilled the holes for the wings and for her bee butt, that I made from a styrofoam ball that I also attached to the doll and covered with epoxy. For gluing the additional arms, I used hot glue. When all of the epoxy parts cured, I sanded everything down again for as smooth transition as possible. Not an easy task with so many rubbery parts, but I did what I could. I cleaned away all the dust and our girl was ready for painting. Three coats of brown, yellow, black and white acrylics, three coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat Varnish and few layers of pastel treatment for blushing and shading. I sprayed this doll with Mr. Super Clear at least four or five times during the pastel phase. 
It fixed my progress and helped the colors build up better, especially the light tones, like the yellow one. Of course I needed to add some fluffiness to her design, so I prepared some brushed out and ironed acrylic yarn in yellow, black and white. And I glued it to her bee butt layer by layer. The hair dryer was essential here, cause it speeded the process a lot. And even so, this part of the project took me a whole day. I wanted to give her this bumblebee-like fluffy color around her neck and I started by gluing some black hair to her chest and slowly going up and switching to the yellow hair. At some point I started trimming the fluffy butt and giving it a proper shape. I was going back and forth from the butt to the collar. Gluing the hair to the neck was kinda tricky, but in the end I don't regret this decision at all. Anyway, after the long process of gluing, brushing and trimming, and finishing the butt with some yellow fluff, she looked like this. Fluffy. I could finally remove the protective wrap from her head and give her some hairstyle. I gave her two ponytails and wrapped a bandable wire tightly around them. To cover the wire I used a small strand of hair and secured it with a drop of glue. Then I made lots of tiny curls. If you are not new to my videos, you probably know the drill now. I separated a small strand of hair and wrapped it around this old telescopic radio antenna that I heated up with my hair straightener. 5 seconds of waiting and voila! Few hours later I could start curling the other one. With all the curls done I could move on to the styling. Brush out, cut, fix with hairspray, repeat. Then just trim everything to the desired shape and length. I highly recommend those thread cutters. So sharp. And the sound. So satisfying. Okay, time for the wings. I used my good old resin method, but this time I made them straight on the plastic roller without the plastic wrap to avoid any resin distortion during curing. I also added few drops of black pearly ink to the resin. I carefully removed the cured wings from the roller and sanded down all the sharp edges.
Because those wings were perfectly flat, I could paint the pattern on the back and then pour more resin on top, so the pattern ends up in the middle. In a similar way I made the resin antennas, that I painted black and covered with a gloss varnish. I used a really hot poking tool to create the holes for the antennas. I assembled everything and could start working on her stand. From a piece of wood I cut the very uneven cylinder and drilled the hole in it for the wire attachment. I used a thick but bendable wire as a base for the flower that our girl will be sitting on. I covered the stock with scraps of warbler and from some bigger pieces I cut 5 petals. Each petal I cut out twice to double their thickness. The first petal was supposed to cover the wire, so I needed to put it on the stalk first and then seal the edges by pressing them with the acrylic roller. The rest I could press and form a little in my hands before attaching them to the stalk, so it was much easier to do. In the middle of the flower I put a flattened ball of warbler that I poked million times to make it look more fluffy and organic. For now it looks like a peach seed, but after the paint job it will look better, trust me. Warbler has its texture, so to make my flower smoother I covered it with four layers of watered down Vico glue. I let each layer dry completely before I put another one. For even smoother base, I sprayed the flower with a black primer and started painting. I was watching a lot of videos about painting miniatures lately and in one of those videos there was this orchid-like flower, pretty similar to the one I made. The painting technique was so great and made the flower look really organic and realistic. Well, I wanted to try this. I needed to make friends with my airbrush again. And you must know we do not have the best relationship. But in the end, I think I did pretty decent job. I fixed my paint job under a layer of gloss varnish and it was time to glue the flower to the stand. I made boundaries from the silver tape and mixed some kitty litter with a wood glue. Then just pour the mixture on the wooden stand. After a few hours I could remove the tape and cut the edges of the expanded mass. I painted the stand with brown and black acrylics, sprayed the paint job with varnish and glued on some moss pieces and the tiny tufts of grass. Before I glued the doll to her flower, I decided to create some dew drops with an UV resin. I also gave a big dew drop to my girl to hold. This one I cured layer by layer so it won't run down.
finally, I glued the doll to her stand and voila, she was done. So, what do you think about my bumblebee fairy? Does she fit into her family? I am personally very happy that I made her. She looks cute and also very feminine. I love her pose. Love her innocent face with those baby hair. I love her pom-pom hairstyle and her fluffy bee butt. All her fluffy parts. And I am very happy with the flower. I really am happy with how she turned out in general, can you tell? This doll was supposed to be made in April, as the second part of my birthday your treat video from last year. But 2022 is pushing my schedule from its beginning, so... Anyway, I want to stick to this idea for the future and make April the month for the most requested dolls. Also, I will be making one more doll from the black and yellow striped family. But only one. Can you guess which? This doll, once again, will go to my mom's collection. It wasn't supposed to, but my mom really likes her. I guess I can't have anything nice, can I? I hope that you enjoyed this video, as much as I enjoyed making this little fluffy fairy. If you did, you can let me know in the comments or by giving this video a thumbs up. Or why not do both? If you are new here and curious of what I'm gonna do next, subscribe to my channel with the bell for the future notifications. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon! Pee pee, będziesz silniejszy. Ho, ho. Lizę. A te zje mogę to? Nie, nie mogę. Mogę wypić? Mogę? Mogę wypić? Możesz, możesz. Hej.